Yo, what is up YouTube? Today I'm gonna be desmogging a KTM 350 EXE. Sorry I didn't film the whole process for you. It's uh, way too involved, there's too many tight spots, but this will give you the gist of it so that you can successfully desmog your 350 and get rid of a lot of those poor running problems. It's a lot more intimidating than it really is in real life, so uh, don't be intimidated and that's why I'm making you this video. Just so you have a little visual of what I'm talking about, this is what the uh, smog system looks like on the 350 XC. This is the hose that comes back into that brass nipple. Here is the uh, solenoid deal on the left side of the bike with the evaporator canister, the evaporator canister bracket, and the valve in the front. The evaporator canister was hanging here. You're going to have to remove the top motor mount brackets and remove the little bracket that holds the evaporator canister on. This valve used to be right here in the front of the head. So first things first, you're gonna remove the fuel tank from your motorcycle. This right here on the side of the motorcycle is where the gas tank vent hose goes in. There's another tube that comes up and plugs into the gas tank vent hose. That tube runs along the frame down here and it runs into the back and into a brass nipple that goes right there. It's right behind your throttle body if you can't figure that out. Normally there's a brass nipple here and it has a hose connected to it. With the part numbers that I'm going to supply in the description, remove this little brass nipple that the hoses used to connect to and you're going to install this little 6 millimeter bolt with a, a copper crush washer. Next, remove this solenoid. It's not as easy as I just made it look. If you desire, loosen the motor mounts and remove the evaporator canister bracket. A little bonus to removing the smog equipment is that you now have a new rubber for your kickstand. Once you get all the hoses removed, remove the header from the motorcycle and also loosen up the radiator Ideally, you would take the radiator off. I didn't want to have to dump my coolant, but it did make it a hell of a lot tougher. Next, remove this from the head. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I used a really long screwdriver to uh, loosen those bolts right there from the other side of the motorcycle so that uh, I had a little bit more clearance to get this thing out. The frame, the radiator hoses, all that stuff is in the way. So uh, just uh, manipulate it around best for you and you may get some uh, needle nose vice grips or something to help you loosen things but uh, basically what happened when I took these screws out right here it allowed me to just turn it out of the engine and it had the clearance that just rotated out so I didn't even have to use anything on that nut. Using the part number that I supply in the description install this aluminum plug with a copper crush washer into your head. So now we got the exhaust reinstalled we're going to take the little solenoid wire thing here and we're gonna run it up and uh, right here where your uh, CDI box mounts up we're gonna stick that right there and we're just gonna clamp it up and out of the way all right guys bolt it all together and come in here when you start your idle is gonna be too low so go in there to your uh, your choke idle screw and turn it that direction about four or five uh, clicks it has pretty positive little clicks on the on the idle adjustment so four or five clicks that way it'll get your idle up and your bike will restart I ended up um, putting mine at about five or six clicks so there you have it that's the whole process uh, it's not really too difficult it'll probably take you at least an hour and a half if you got the correct tools laid out there's just some tight spots. It's, uh, it's not hard at all. You just have to take your time and not get frustrated and uh, you'll have a better running bike. Catch you later and um, check out some of my other how-to videos. I'll uh, link them in here somewhere.